Hello, homeschool friends. Welcome to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel. Today has been such a weird day. I need something to keep my hands busy while I mull it over. Do you want to mull it over with me? <laughs> All right, what I'm going to be doing with my hands is I'm doing some prep. I am making flashcards for the McAfee Eclectic Primer, the revised edition. I'll link them for you down below. I also have a set for the original McAfee's um, primer. So I've been working on that today while I've been thinking about my oldest son. He is 12, he's in the seventh grade. I was gonna show you, this is how I'm like, as I cut them out, I just like write what lesson they are from and I've been just been sticking like this in one of my empty um, laundry sheets. <laughs> Actually, so these McGuffey flashcards, there's double of each one. Let's see. Let's see? Because I want to be able to play games with them. I'm by the way. It's from the words that are pulled out. And then there's, and something I liked about the revised versions versus the originals is that a lot of, they're much more consistent with the number of words. So it's about nine or 10 every time with this one. And the other one, it, it some of those were super, super long. Some of them were short. It was kind of more all over the place. So I did like that about this one and every once in a while if I had some extra squares left over flashcards left over like if there wasn't quite enough like that there was only eight words or something then I would I might make like one of the noun words plural like dress might I might also add dresses right or something like that just to fill it in but I was trying not to introduce any new words that weren't already in the lesson. So I might make something plural or I might like add another word that was in the lesson that was kind of like a review word. I didn't do any flashcards for the review lessons just because I just like to let that stand on its own. Okay, so now I have a double set of words so we can play memory with this or go fish, which we like to play. So this is lesson 21. I know I don't have to do this on the back. I just wanted to, just in case I got mine mixed up. Through the book. I'll probably let myself do this in a couple and a couple goes, probably like th over the course of three days or something. I'll just kind of work on it while the kids are doing school. I love to turn on like a podcast or something though and just work on something like that. So satisfying. This is what I'm working on right now. This is what I'm mulling over. <laughs> so I have three boys, they're 12. William just turned eight and Bo is like five and a half. So I had my two oldest working in their student planners. My middle son, he's actually able to keep track of his work pretty well, just using his planner. He rarely misses anything. Um, my oldest though, <laughs> like your planner isn't helpful if you don't look at it <laughs> or if you check off boxes that you haven't done. <laughs> you kidding? You think you don't have to do it? So I don't know if ADD, I mean, I guess we technically got that diagnosis, but I kind of feel like it's because I pushed it a little bit. He was like right on the, like the very, very border. Like he wasn't overwhelmingly when they give, they did, all they do is those little questionnaires. It's not like there's really like a, there's not like a blood test for it, right? It just feels so weird. You're like, is my kid just a 12 year old kid or is my, does my kid have ADD? <laughs> Or I shouldn't say he's 12. He's kind of always been very dreamy and um, a very sweet, fun-loving kid. But he was always much more interested in socializing at school than, you know, which can you blame him <laughs> than doing like the worksheets and stuff, you know? And I thought that maybe that was just because he was a boy. I had a hard time relating because I was like the total opposite. 
I was not a social butterfly at all and was just like a nerd that wanted to be a teacher's pet. So, you know, I just, I, I, I my, my oldest has always been an enigma to me, right? And, but I'm trying, I'm his mom. I'm trying to support him as best I can without doing everything for them, right? Which is why I want them, you know, you guys know I've advocated for Monday morning planning meetings and like have teacher kids to plan, like bridge them into it. And it's working really well for my second son. And I don't, and I'm like, again, I don't know if that's because I've had him all along. So he's been under my tutelage his whole life. He never went to public school. And so he's just set up habits and expectations or, you know, or he's just a different kid. My oldest son, he went to public school all the way through third grade or third and a half ish, you know, it's just, they just hand you worksheet, 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 you know, and you don't really have to be that responsible and your best friends there to goof off with. Anyways, a lot, all that to say, um, the planner, it's not doing the job I intended it to do for him. I like kind of on a whim decided today, we're going to try something else. <laughs> and I got the idea from um, what I use with my kindergartner, where, you know, we just open up the book and we just, uh, whatever level he's on, and we just go through reading and writing um, arithmetic, um, like a story, right? Uh, some listening comprehension and narrate oral narration kind of stuff. And then just something else to cover our social studies and science, which, whichever one we're kind of doing. And it's just, you know, every day I just keep it bookmarked for him. He actually even puts a little bookmark in himself, like he knows, right? And we just put it back on the shelf when we're done, when we get to the end of the day's pages. I was like, well, could I do that for Everett? Like, could I do that for a seventh grader? So here's my attempt. <laughs> and I was thinking about calling this like the ADHD notebook <laughs> for middle schoolers. But I decided just to call it the everything notebook because it's just kind of everything. And I let him create his own. Um, I'll link this actually. I made it into a resource and I'll link it down below in case anyone thinks that's something that they are interested in trying. Uh, I let him make his own cover, although I did, I made some cute covers um, to choose from that will come with it. But I let him, it was fun. He's been wanting to go into Canva and like do his own little designing thing. So it was fun to let him, he came up with that. I mean, he may be like, who knows? He may be a graphic designer someday or some, you know, something. So got to let him try things out. So I made this notebook and I think that part of his issue is having too many books to shuffle around. But just from like observing him, there's a lot of shuffling of books and workbooks and notebooks and things around. And I'm just wondering if that isn't adding to like a cognitive load on him for somebody that already is, um, that's a little more easily distracted that, you know, you get distracted by something you kind of forget that you were gonna grab that book or that you didn't already do it or something. Do you know what I mean? I decided what if I could make him an everything notebook and kind of simplify what he's doing. Let me show you what he currently has. He has, you know, whatever book he's currently reading on his book list. Oh, and he has a reading journal, which I just took apart or else I would show it to you again. But I just, I just made him this brand new reading journal. So I'm kind of pulling my hair out that I'm like completely redoing everything. But he has a book, a reading journal to fill out an entry in. Then he has Apologia Science. He's doing this by himself. I just kind of check in with them. And it comes with a big, big notebook full of pages and stuff. So textbook, notebook. And then he has, you know, his lab kit that goes with it to do labs. He's doing World, Worldly Wise 3000, book seven. And just to keep this so I can like reuse it and have to keep buying it. I'm having him do his exercises in a notebook. Oh, so they kind of look like that in there. He's doing Harvey's grammar. I'm just having him do that in a notebook. And we're doing Right Start Math. And that has another workbook too, even though you don't do the workbook every day. So that's one, two, nine, and it would be 10 with the journal, which I actually still have. It's just taken apart down here. 10, right? And a planner that he's like juggling around. 
and I think we need to simplify it. So this is what I came up with. So I did pull you know, a couple pages from the beginning of his planner, just like his student info, his curriculum list, his little, his, like, his little bookshelf and he's coloring it in as he reads books. Um, I did include the how to make a reading plan because he said he thought he might still need that information. He still has all the like bookmarks that we printed out to go with that. I just clipped them together and put them on his book stand. Uh, his book log from his planner so he can just keep, you know, recording what he reads and when he completes it. I can go on to the next page too. Then I printed out this. This was in his reading journal, the fiction categories. And just first I use this as his bookmark. You'll see, you'll see why I did this shortly. So then I just decided to see if I could make something that was just open and go. And all he had to do was maybe just have the textbooks. So let's see how it looked today. Some of it he'd already done because I was working on this today, like while he was doing school. So I was like, I actually did some of my own writing in here just to see how well things fit and to see how usable it was. Like, oh, did I need more space or whatever? And I did this in the order. I put them in the order that he's actually doing his schoolwork. So he starts out the day by reading. Um, so I put reading journal, he dates it, the book title, how, the pages that he read, and the genre of the book. That's why he needs this. <laughs> then chapter notes. So you can take any notes on the chapter and then um, a spot down here for doodling or drawing or whatever. They, he could do more writing, a separate type of writing if he wanted to. I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to come up with something to help him because I liked the things that were in that reading journal, but if I'm not going to use it for him because I don't want him shuffling around so much stuff, I may have to make some kind of page that has like prompts for the journal pages. I don't know. Or he could just do summaries. I don't really care right now. I'm just trying to get him to actually like get everything done every day. And with the Robinson curriculum, so this is intended, I wanted to have something that was general enough. So if he was reading a book that was like you know, going towards lit or going towards history. Um, I usually have them read separate science books, but a lot of these would be like, you know, uh, this could be fiction or nonfiction. So just whatever was on the list that he was reading, I wanted him to be able to just use the same page. So we didn't have to like keep reprinting things or making new ones. Okay, then he does science for us. This is how we do it. We do reading and then we do his science journal. So he's just reading his apology of general science. And I just made the decision today that he doesn't have to do the notebook anymore. <laughs> that, that's this big thing. Like we still have to kind of keep it around. I'll put it on the science shelf because it has the, um, it has the lab write up pages. Yeah, it has his write up pages. So when he does the experiments, he'll need to still have that. So I'm just going to put it with his lab kit stuff. So when he gets in there to get all his supplies, this is just going to be considered one of his lab supplies. But I don't really care if he's doing all of these pages in here anymore because we're needing to simplify. <laughs> and instead, he's going to read for 30 minutes. He has designated page numbers of pages for his like reading journal you know, page, but for his science journal page, I'm just going to go just read for 30 minutes, work through whatever's in the book. Cause what the book has in it is these sections, the on your own, right? I just, am going to have him answer these questions. And he also, I told him anything that's like in blue, that's a, like a science vocabulary term, then just to go ahead and define it in his notes. And I'll show you what that ended up looking like. So I, I ran through it <laughs> and uh, we did the on your own section and wrote that out and then did a couple uh, vocabulary terms. And then there's all this space too. again, if there was a diagram or something that he wanted to copy or study more or whatever, then uh, we didn't get to this. He, he was doing it. Uh, on another piece of paper, so it didn't get in, but this is for him to do his wordly wise. So like he should be able just to use his workbook just to write in the answers right here. And then we do, we have the answers to it so we can check it um, when he's done. But yeah, just to do the exercises in his book, there were some crosswords and I told him when you get to a crossword, he can just take a photocopy of it and do it and then just like cut it out and paste it in if he wants to and then i gave him a page for grammar exercises 
So since he is doing the Harvey's grammar, then he should be able to just do, you know, whatever section it is. Um, he can say what lesson number or what page number, and he should just be able to do, have enough room here because they're not very long. Like they're not, they shouldn't require like more than a page, I don't think. And then I did leave a space for a writing journal space. And I thought writing prompt, there might be times where, you know, we're just giving them prompt or, or maybe we have some kind of resource. I've been thinking about doing like um, a, a cards uh, that have just different writing prompts of like writing prompts of the day or something for right now for him. Or when we go back to using, because right now we, we kind of just paused writing and rhetoric. But when we go back to it, he will be on book four. And when we do this together, a lot of it we just do like verbally. So I may just be able to have him do it verbally. And then it, if there is writing components, he can just write it here. And if not, if, if it's like, if, if other people wanted to use this and they wanted to use it for essay writing, you know how they say just write like one, RC is like one page of a one page essay. You just write like a three paragraph essay or something like that then there's space for that and then there's i would have included the writing rubric so they know what to what's expected of them what to be looking for and then when you give them feedback um this will be helpful for you to see um what to check on their stuff and then i think i've talked about this with some of my other um like my mcguffey companion notebooks but as far as feedback goes you may want to just pick like one specific area that they're weak on to have them try to focus on for the next time so that they're not just like overwhelmed, like fix everything, <laughs> you know? Like maybe highlight specifically what you want them to pay special attention to the next day on their writing. You could even have them just rewrite the same one, right? Over and over until it's good. Okay, and then uh, I have double pages for math exercises. So I know a lot of people are going to be working like in Saxon or, you know, something else where they're just working from a textbook. And I wanted to have plenty of room for that. We are using write, write Start Math, right? So I've got the lesson book and this is something I usually do with them every once in a while. I mean, sometimes he does this by himself. He can just look in here and do it and kind of see what he needs. He can kind of just like look at what he needs to do if like I'm really, really busy and I can't. But... Yeah, most of the time I, have to, I do it with him, him or my husband if he's home because it's more interactive. And I will say, I was just watching a video. Gosh, where is it? I wonder if, if I can find it, I'll share it. It was like a, it said it was like eight years old. It was a doctor who was talking about ADHD. And he was saying that it's not what they don't, it's not that they don't know stuff. It's, it's an executive function disorder. Uh, that's what he was saying anyways. And so it's the actually doing it that's the issue, not the knowing, if that makes sense. And so he says specifically, if you you know have a kid who with ADHD, like for math, put manipulatives in their hands, like give them physical objects to manipulate because that brings them into the now. And I thought, well, that's great because that's what Right Start Math already is doing. It's already working with manipulatives and he does like it a lot. He looks forward to math now. So it's games. It's, it's all types of games that you play. It's not always, it's, it's not always like worksheets. And if it is worksheets, it's very short. So I put this here because there are days that we do um, worksheet work. And I, I was like, well, he's probably just going to do what's in here, right? I'm not going to make him like rewrite this kind of stuff. But there are days where it asks you to do math journal, and so he can use this for that. And if he does it, you know, something like here, we can just record what worksheet it was, and that it was it'll, it'll be in here. And I'll just I'll just hold on to this with the lesson book, so it's not something he has to juggle so much. But it's here for if we want to practice, let's say math facts. If there's something else I want him to just like keep up on, we have room for it. Okay, and once he gets to math, that's the last thing he does. And hit the day and it's a whole new day so that way he can't like he can't move on right until he's done with a page onto the next page <laughs> right and just everything's right here so that'll be i mean that got rid of a couple things so so there's no planner to look at there's no planning to do you just work through your day's work you know you start with reading and you end with math and you just 
do all the pages in between. So this was, I want to say 26 days worth. I didn't want to print it out too big. So I told him probably like, you know, every month he'll have to reprint this. I'm going to try to train him to bind it himself, but um, he wants to design his own cover. He wants to be able to design a new cover every month. I'm like, great, that's wonderful. I would love you to design a new cover every month and put this together. And I think that might give him a little bit of more ownership over his schoolwork too, instead of me always doing all the prep work and everything. So I don't know. What do you think about my idea? Do you think this is going to work and help keep him on track? <laughs> uh, I hope so. You know, you got if, if something, if it's not working, don't keep doing the same thing. If it's not working, I was giving it time, but I was like, today, I was just like, you know, today is the day. We're going to try something else. <laughs> so I whipped this baby up. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna work on just a little bit longer tonight, I think. I'm gonna go back through my that writing journal that I have from Not Consumed and see if I get some ideas of things. To, maybe I could prompt him to, things to remind him to look for in his reading, for taking his um, like chapter notes or whatever. And yep, simplifying is the name of the game. Okay, so now what he'll have is this. His math, right now we're doing you know, his grammar, his vocab, one science book, and whatever he's reading. That's less, I got rid of some stuff. I hope that was helpful to anybody who's dealing with the same stuff I am. And I will put all the links.